Hello Divination and welcome. In today's video, I'm going to share with you three seamless transform hover effects that you can apply to your images with Divi. This is the final result we're aiming to achieve. So without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let's get started. Let's start by creating a brand new page. So I'm going to come over here, click on add new. Next, we need to give a page a name. So I'm just going to call this effects. But of course, you can call this page whatever you want. And then I'm going to click on Use Divi Builder. Uh, over here, we're going to build this from scratch. So I'm going to go ahead and select it and then close this for now. So the first thing we want to do is to add some margins and some padding to our section. So I'm going to come over here, click this gear icon to enter our section settings. Click on Design, Spacing. So let's start with adding our margin of 200 at the top. So this is going to be 200 pixels. I'm going to activate my chain so I can apply the same amount both to the top and the bottom. And then for the padding, we're going to make sure that we re remove any spacing. So I'm going to add zero pixels. Again, it's going to be to the top and the bottom. And that's it for now. So I'm going to go ahead and save. Next, I'm going to add some columns. So I'm going to click here on this plus button and we're going to go with two columns. Now it's time to add our background colors to our columns. So I'm just going to close this for now. We're going to come back and add our modules. So to add our column colors, I'm going to click here on this gear icon to, ex uh, to enter my row settings. And then the color that we're going to add is going to go to my column two settings. So I'm going to click here on the second column, click on background, and then I'm going to add my color. So I'm going to paste my color in here. Now, if you want to use the exact same colors as I'm using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to that in the post below. Okay, so I've added my color. Now I'm just going to go back over here. The next stage is to make some adjustments to my row settings. So I'm going to come over here to design sizing. So first of all, we want to um, adjust our gutter width. So we're going to set this to one. So what this gutter width does is it just reduces the spacing between the columns. And then what we need to do here as well, we want to equalize column height. So I'm going to go ahead and activate that. Now over here on the width, let's make sure that this is set to 100%. And I'm just going to copy that because we also want to make sure that our maximum width is also set to 100%. Now let's head over to spacing. So here we need to adjust our custom padding. So I'm going to set it to zero. And this also applies both to the top and the bottom. Now let's add some padding to column two. So to access column two, I'm just going to come back over here to the content. And then we're going to click on this gear icon here and click on design. So all the settings I'm adding here are only for column two, which is this one right here. So I'm gonna click here on spacing and for our top padding, we're gonna set this to 10 VW and we're also going to apply the same amount to the bottom as well. Now for the left and right padding, we're gonna set this to 5 VW. So I'm just gonna enter it in here and apply it both to the left and the right. Right, so now that we're done making our customizations to our columns, let's save and save this one more time. And then over here, we want to add a text module. So I'm going to search for it and select it. And in here, we just want to add our title. So I'm just going to paste some dummy text here as my title. And I'm going to set it, I'm going to set this to heading two. So I'm going to click on this drop down, choose heading two. Now let's customize this heading. So I'm going to click here on design, heading text, click the heading two tab. And then over here, we want to change our default font here to Times New Roman. So I'm just going to search for that and select it. On the font weight, we're going to make sure that this is set to bold. We are going to also give this a text color. So I'm going to come over here on this eyedropper tool and paste my value here for my colors. And then finally, we need to set our size for our text. So by default, it's set to 26. Uh, we're going to set this to 3.5 VW. So the next stage is to add a divider. So I'm going to go ahead and save. And then I'm going to click on this plus button and search for divider. So I'm going to select it and making sure divide, show divider is set to yes. The next stage is to change our divider color. So I'm going to click here on design line and I'm going to add my color in here. So I'm just going to replace this by pasting my color in here. Now let's also make further adjustments. So I'm just going to clo uh, collapse that. And over here on sizing, um, it's set to one pixel. That's fine. But for our width, we want to make sure that this is set to about 20%. That way, the line does not go all the way across. And for the module alignment, we're going to align this to the left. And then for the height, we're going to set this to zero. Next, we're going to add some margins to this. So I'm going to come over here to spacing and I'm going to set this to one VW, both to the top and the bottom. So pretty much we're done here. I'm going to save. Now it's time to add a text module. So I'm going to click this plus button and search for text, 
select my module. And then over here, I'm just gonna replace all this text with my dummy text like that. And I'm just gonna make sure that I just have just two paragraphs like that. Okay, so now that I've said it this way, um, you can see here that my text is above this divider line. I need to change that. So, but before I do that, I just wanna customize my text. So let's head over here to my design tab and change this default font to Open Sans. So I'm gonna search for Open Sans, select it, and then over here on the size, we're gonna set this to 0.7 VW, and then our alignment here, we're gonna justify this, and then we also need to make some adjustments to our line height, so I'm gonna set this to 1.5 VW. Next, we need to make some adjustments over here on the sizing tab. So over here, we're gonna set our width to 60%, and then for the spacing, we're also going to add some margins, both to the top and the bottom. So I'm going to set it to 2VW, activate my chain. And now we have a decent space above and below my paragraph. So I'm going to save this for now. And then I'm just going to rearrange my modules. I'm just going to drag this to the top. So it's right behind our heading here. Now we also need to add one more text module. I'm just gonna click this plus button, search for it and select it. And here all the text we need to add just says read more. Now over here, I'm gonna add a link, but in my case, I'm just gonna add a, a default dummy link. And then let's head over here to design and make some customizations as well. So I'm gonna click here on text and for our font, we're gonna change it to Times New Roman. I'm gonna give this a color. So I'm gonna click on the eyedropper tool and paste my color in here. And then I'm gonna set my text size to 1.5 VW. Next, we need to also change our sizing on our width. So I'm gonna come over here and this needs to be set to 48%. And then we also need to add our top and bottom padding. So I'm gonna click here on spacing and set this to 1 VW. Activate my chain. Now over here on the border, we're just gonna add a border around our button or our text. So the border is going to be just a line below. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on it. And the size here is going to be one pixel. And we're also going to add our color. So I'm gonna paste my color in here and then save. Our future designs are pretty much gonna have the same sort of layout that I have right here. So it might be a good idea to go in and clone this section twice. Now, as you can see, I can't really see my settings for my sections, but in fact, they've come up now. But if you can't select it, all you have to do is to come over here to expand settings, click on wireframe mode, and then just clone this twice like that. So now we have three sections which have pretty much the same content in it. So now let's flip back over here to our desktop mode. So let's start working on our first design here. So I'm gonna click here on this gear icon to access my row settings. And the first thing we need to do here is to add an image to column one. So to do that, I'm gonna click here on this gear icon to access column one. So to add our image, I'm gonna click here on background, click the third tab, and then I'm gonna click on the plus button. And this is the image that we're going to add. So I'm gonna click upload an image. Next, we're just gonna save and save this one more time. Now over here, we're going to add an image module. I'm gonna select it. So for the background here, we're gonna add a color. So I'm gonna click on this plus button and add my background color like that. So while we're here on the background, we need to add a hover state. So I'm gonna click on this arrow here, click on the hover tab, and we're going to paste our color in here. Now the color that we're going to add here has a bit of transparency in it. So I'm just gonna drag the slider down and then paste my values between the brackets. Now, if you wanna follow step-by-step, step, uh, I'll leave a link to the post in the show notes below. So the next stage is to add an image. So I'm gonna come over here on the image tab, click this plus button and add our second image. Click upload an image. And then we're going to go with these following settings. So first of all, you wanna make sure that the background image is set to cover the position, the position to center and then the background image repeat to no repeat. And then the background image blend needs to be set to soft light. So the next, let's come over here to spacing. And what we need to make sure we do here is where it says image space below image, it needs to be set to no. So I'm gonna click here to deactivate that. And then we're going to also need top and bottom padding to show this image. So I'm gonna come over here and add my padding. 
And we're also going to add the bottom. So since this is the same value, I'm just gonna activate my chain here. So as you can see, now we have the same values both to the top and the bottom. And now my image is now showing. So the next stage is to head over to the default translate rotate. So I'm gonna come over here to transform, click here on transform rotate and set it here to zero degrees. So what we need to do as well here is to set a hover state. So I'm gonna click on this arrow here and on hover, we're gonna set this to 180. And then finally, we are going to come over here to the advanced tab, transitions, and we are going to change our duration to zero. Now, the reason why we're doing this here is to have an immediate effect. And then pretty much that's it, I'm gonna save. All right, so let's move on to the second example. So we're gonna add an image module to column one. So I'm gonna search for image and select my image module. So as we did in the first example, we're going to leave this empty. So I'm just gonna come over here and just click on reset. We're gonna add a background color. So we're gonna click this plus button and this color here is gonna have transparency. So I'm just gonna drag the slider down and paste the values between the brackets. Next, we are going to add our hover state. So I'm gonna click on this arrow here, click on this color area and paste my values between the brackets as I did before. Now, if you wanna use the exact same colors as I'm using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. All right, so now that we've added this, the next stage is to add our image. So I'm gonna click here on the third tab, click this plus button and then add my image and then click upload. So here on the uh, image settings, we just wanna make sure it's set to cover center no repeat and for the image background mode we're going to set this to soft light now let's head over to the spacing so i'm going to click here on design spacing and what we need to do here is to make sure show space below image is set to no and our top padding needs to be set to 22 vw and this needs to be applied to the bottom as well so now you can see our image is now visible now let's head over here to transform and what we need to select here is the scale. So the default needs to be set to 100% on the default state. And then let's head over here to the hover state. So over here, we are going to set this to 120%. And also make sure that the 120 is on both axes. And then over here on the transform translates, we need to make sure that this is set to zero on the default stage. So again, we're gonna set this to uh, the hover state. So over here, let's break this chain because the value that we need to add is only going to go on the bottom. So the value is 9VW. Now to finalize this design, let's head over to the advanced tab and add our translation duration. So I'm gonna come over here to transitions and set this to 200. So I'm gonna save this for now. And it's time now to work on example number three. So first of all, we need to change the column structure. So I'm gonna come over here and change this to one third, two thirds. So I'm gonna go ahead and select it. So as we did before, we're gonna add our image module. So I'm just gonna search for it and select. Then we're gonna click here to add our image. So I'm gonna select it and then click upload an image. Next on the design tab on the sizing, we're gonna force this to go full width. And then for the spacing, we're also going to make sure that uh, show space below image is set to no. Now it's time to head over to the border. So I'm gonna click here on border and we're going to set our corners to 500 VW. So as soon as I enter that, you can see now we have a perfect circle. Now on the hover state, we wanna make sure that we remove this Settings. So I'm gonna click here on the hover tab and set this to zero. So this time we're gonna do something different because we're gonna come over here to the filters and this is where we're going to play with our saturation. So for our saturation here, make sure it's set to 100%. On the brightness, it needs to be 46%. And finally, the opacity needs to be set to 3%. Now let's start entering our hover state. So I'm gonna start here with the saturation. So we're gonna change this and make sure the hover tab is selected. We're gonna set this to 300. The brightness needs to be set to 46. So I'm gonna click here on the hover tab, enter my value. And then finally on the opacity on the hover, it needs to be set to 100. Now let's head over to the transform. So the default here needs to be set to 68. And then on the hover state, we're gonna set it to 
130. And then over here on the uh, transform translate, on the default, we're gonna set it to zero. And then on the hover state, so we need to make sure that this is right. So on the default, it's zero, but on the hover states, on the right, we're gonna set this to one VW. But in order for us to add different values, we need to make sure the chain is broken here. So I'm gonna add one VW. And then on the bottom, we are going to add eight V. W. And then over here on the advanced tab, let's add our transitions. So I'm going to click here on transitions and we're going to set this duration to 600 milliseconds. So pretty much that's our final design. Let's save this and then we are going to do a quick preview and see what this looks like. So I'm going to save the page, exit the visual builder, and then we're just going to do some previews. So let's see what happens when you hover. So now you can see this effect. It's pretty cool. Let's move on to the next one. And then let's move on to the final one. So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we release new tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.